Hello everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I'm going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours, because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful star-nosed mole. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Henry, Audrey, Bo, Jenny, Ellie, and DDG, who wrote his or her suggestion in their review. Thank you all for this amazing suggestion. This episode would not have been possible without you. If you enjoy the podcast and would like more of it, and would also like the opportunity to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts, or just click on the link that is in the description. For how to request your very own episode, and for the facts that were used in this episode, all of that is in the description or in the show notes, but you can also wait until the end of the show in which I will let you know. And now, we are going to begin slowing down as we prepare ourselves for our journey. As always, I have three exhortations for you. The first is to put on a pair of rubber boots. We definitely do not want to be wearing some pair of expensive sneakers here. And the second thing I encourage you to do is to realize where you are perhaps carrying some tension. Is it in the head? Is it in the neck? In the legs? Who knows? Everybody is different in this regard. But my all-around exhortation is the same. And that is to do your best jello impersonation. So wherever you normally carry your tension, and no matter how much, we do not need all of that where we are going. And my third exhortation to you is to give your mind permission to wander and journey with me into the wetlands of eastern Canada, where the star-nosed mole resides. As is quite uncommon on the show, I am not required to travel very far being a Canadian myself. So many times for these trips I have to make my way down to Australia or to some parts of Africa. So while today we are in the wetlands of southeastern Canada, we could also be in the forests or marshes or swamps, basically many habitats that are near water. We could also have gone to the United States, but if we wanted to see a star-nosed mole in the United States, we wouldn't have had to go all that far. They are present in the northeastern part of the United States, while we are in southeastern Canada, so very near one another. And we can be here because the star-nosed mole is a native of eastern North America. They simply love moist soil, it allows them to dig much easier, and so places like wet meadows and clearings, marshes, they love all of these sorts of things. And so the creature we are attempting to find now is a small mole. Now full disclosure, the star-nosed mole is one of the most unique looking creatures I have ever seen. They have one of the strangest appearances, I think, of any animal that we've covered on the show so far. Some might even use the adjective bizarre when it comes to this creature. And the reason why they are considered so peculiarly strange is because of a star-shaped nose that is ringed with 22 fleshy appendages. The technical term for these appendages are rays. And with these 22 fleshy rays, they will be able to navigate the world in a way that certainly we cannot. They will feel their way around the soil and around the different areas that they are in, and even employ it to hunt prey and hunt prey efficiently. The scientific name of the star-nosed mole is the Condylura cristata. This took some research on my part to try to figure out why they were called this, but the word Condylura goes back to a Greek word that means knuckle. And when we think of the word knuckle, it is not just referring to those on our hands, but really the knuckle of any joint, basically a flat part at the end of any bone. 
and the word Christata is derived from Christa, which means crested or something with these tassel-like tips. They used this word to refer to this golden yellow crest that is on the iris. The iris is a kind of flower that has these feather-like spikes that splay out and honestly looks similar to the nose of the star-nosed mole. And so literally translated, the Condolora cristata would be something like knuckle crest or knuckle crested. It is always interesting to see how researchers come up with their scientific names. And now here, if we look in the marsh, we can actually see one right now. Let's go over some basic things about them before we go into the specifics of this wondrous creature. The one that we are looking at right now is probably under four years old. That is because they have an approximate lifespan of three to four years on average. You'll notice one thing, that this mole is not particularly large. It will range between 15 to 20 centimeters or about 6 to 8 inches. They will weigh about 12 pounds, which is something like 55 grams, about 5 kilograms for those who prefer that measurement. They are dark brown in color, and they have these large claws at the end of their feet. So now that we have got some of that peripheral stuff out of the way, let's dive a little bit deeper onto that nose. That star, or their nose, is actually the most sensitive known touch organ in any mammal in the entire world. It is so sensitive that it contains more than 100,000 nerve fibers. Just so we can compare, that is about five times the number of touch fibers that we have in our hands. And our hands are about the size of the mole to begin with. And so not only do they have five times the number of touch fibers, but they are extremely concentrated into a space smaller than our fingertips. That makes for one really sensitive nose. And researchers say that they still do not know just how sensitive the skin on the star is. Basically, anything that they have tried has activated the neurons in the star-nosed mole. So they have not yet come up with such a low stimuli so as to not activate their brains. All of this points to one of the most amazing organs in the animal kingdom. Now one thing to note is that the mole actually does have eyes, but they do not see like you and I. And there is a part of the star organ, specifically in the middle, which covers just a small part of the star, which researchers have termed the touch fovea. And this specific area is used for very detailed explorations and navigations through the world. Scientists say that the structure and organization of this little area is very neurologically organized, and it is organized in such a way that it mimics that of other highly developed visual systems. To make this a little bit more concrete, it is something like when we use our eyes while we are reading. We cannot simply stare at the center of the page and read from top to bottom, but our eyes will shift from word to word or from sentence chunk to sentence chunk. And in a similar way, while the star-nosed mole is navigating through their world, it will constantly shift their star to reposition that fovea on areas that interest them. So although they do not see in the way that we do, they do use their star in a way that is functionally similar to how we read. Now, the amount of nerve fibers on that star is going to give them the ability to eat in such a way so as to provoke the awe of all the scientific community. And it is not necessarily the way they eat, but the speed at which they decide and eat. The star-nosed mole is considered the fastest eating mammal on planet Earth. And that is because it can take them as little as 120 milliseconds, but on average something like 227 milliseconds, to identify their prey and to consume whatever it is that their attention is on. It takes all of 8 milliseconds to decide if the prey is edible or not. Now, comparing that to us, this is something that is incredible. 
If I was only given 8 milliseconds to decide if something is edible or not, I do not think that I would be alive very long. But in the case of the star-nosed mole, that is no problem. Just for us to better understand this, our reaction time on average is about 250 milliseconds. But the star-nosed mole will take as little as 120 milliseconds not only to identify the prey, but to eat it. That is remarkably speedy. And one other really amazing thing about the star-nosed mole is that they have the ability to smell underwater. They do, after all, love habitats with plenty of water where the soil is moist. They have the ability to smell underwater by exhaling air bubbles onto objects or onto certain scent trails and then re-inhaling those bubbles to get a sense of the scent. It is always amazing when these small, unsuspecting creatures that are usually buried out of sight have some of the most unique behaviors and abilities in the animal kingdom. And regarding the water as well, their fur, because after all they are our furry friends, is actually water repellent. It is something like an insulated fur coat. And they will navigate through the moist soil with their little claws that they have. And their claws, relatively speaking, are fairly large. That is because they have these broad feet that allow their claws to be that way. They also have a tail that is quite thin and hairy that will measure in at about one to two inches in length. So that is something like one quarter of their body size in just their tail. And using their broad feet, their water repellent fur, and the ability to smell underwater, they are great swimmers and can even dive for several seconds at a time. So these guys are tunnelers, they are swimmers, they are walkers, they do it all, except fly, of course. These creatures are mostly diurnal, though they are active both during the night and during the day. They will even still be active during the winter time when other animals opt not to participate. They will tunnel and forage for food in the snow and even swim in cold, icy streams underneath these frozen ponds. The more I am learning about this critter, the more I am seeing it as something like a blind terminator. The star-nosed mole is no joke. Their diet is a carnivorous diet or an insectivorous diet, meaning that they eat primarily insects. They will eat small invertebrates, so remember that invertebrates just means creatures that do not have backbones. It eats aquatic insects and mollusks, small amphibians and small fish, as well as worms. So they do have a fairly large pool from which they choose to eat, but that pool is strictly carnivorous and they do not eat really any plant material or algae or anything of the like. Now, animals oftentimes give us many insights into uh, medicine or different technologies. The echolocation of bats and of dolphins gave us sonar, for example. The star-nosed mole, because of how sensitive their stars are, researchers are currently studying them to understand more about how pain works and trying to find new treatments for chronic or acute pain. Now, as it stands currently, we do not actually know very much about how they communicate with one another. The young star-nosed moles will let out these high-pitched sounds while the adults will make wheezing noises. But exactly how that communication works and in what context it works is unknown. Perhaps there is a potential or current animal biologist listening here that will in the future discover the mysteries of star-nosed mole communication. Now, star-nosed moles will have other star-nosed mole babies in around March and April. A single litter will generally be between two and seven star-nosed moles, with five being the most typical size of the litter. While the adult mole that we are looking at right now is covered with this fur or hair, the young are completely hairless and will weigh just one and a half grams. 
their star will be functional at around two weeks along with their eyes and their ears. They will become fully independent just within 30 days of being born, and they will be able to have other star-nosed moles of their own at around 10 months of age. Now let us just say a couple of quick facts that are pretty interesting. The appendages on their star move very quickly and can touch up to 12 different objects in one second. Now it is not yet fully understood, but some researchers say that their star perhaps gives them the ability to detect electrical fields, similar to how many sharks have electroreceptors that will allow them to detect those things, but that is not very deeply known just yet. The Guinness Book of World Records also lists the star-nosed mole among the fastest hunters in the world. As we learned about earlier, they certainly deserve this distinction. And the last interesting fact is that their nose is ideal for detecting earthquakes. Given how sensitive it is, certain seismic changes that for us would be virtually undetectable for them might really give them an edge quite early. Other animals are very quick to distinguish whether an earthquake is happening or not. Dogs are an example of that. Dogs will normally sense that something is wrong or that something is coming a lot earlier than humans realize. We mostly realize an earthquake is happening when everything is already shaking, but the star-nosed mole with more than 100,000 nerve receptors will get the hint quite early. Now, starting in Season 6, we are doing charities and foundations uh, every time we cover a specific animal. But in the case of the star-nosed mole, I could not find a single charity or organization that has to do with their well-being. That is because, specifically, it looks as though their population numbers are doing A-OK. -okay. And so there is no charity for me to shout out here on the star-nosed mole episode. And so let us move on to the name mole. What exactly does that word mean? And so it is used to describe a type of a small burrowing insectivorous mammal. We used this definition since the mid 14th century. And it is perhaps a shortening of a word that we no longer use anymore, but maybe we should. And that is the word mold warp. That literally means earth thrower. Now looking at this little small mole, but seeing how fast it burrows and tunnels, giving them the distinction of earth thrower is something that I am on board with. But this word was used as early as the 16th century as describing somebody who works in darkness. But this word might go all the way back to a Middle Dutch or a Middle Low German word. It may represent an Old English word as well, but so far it is unrecorded and undiscovered. So suffice to say that it is really not extensively known how we got this word. Very common, of course, in the world of etymology. Language is constantly changing and it is not as neat and tidy as we'd like it to be sometimes. And this review comes from Miri, with a lot of E's, 007. And Miri is writing all the way from Great Britain. Miri writes, Excellent podcast. Very relaxing and with some great and interesting facts. So pleased I found it. Thank you, Miri, for the kind words, short and to the point. I so much appreciate your feedback and I'm so glad that you love the show and that you're a part of it. If the show helps you and you want to give back in any way, leaving a review truly is one of the quickest and most impactful things you can do for the show. It gives me feedback, it allows the show to get better, and it allows more people to find the show to begin with. And so I encourage you to do so if you so choose. To request your very own episode, you can do so by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Animal Request tab. I respond to each and every one of you, at least I do my very best to, and if I ever do not reply to you, please send me another message. If you would like to tell me anything else, you can do so by sending a message to Relax With Animal Facts on Instagram or sending an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. The resources used in this episode come from eurekaalert.org, nationalgeographic.com, 
animalia.bio, and etimonline.com. All of those resources are in the show notes or the description so you can search to your heart's content. This episode would not have been possible without their contributions. What an amazing creature we have covered today. Some of the most smallest and unsuspecting creatures can be hiding wonderful treasures underneath the surface. In the case of the star-nosed mole, literally underneath the surface. These tunnelers had plenty of surprises and I am so glad that we got to learn about them today. I hope you have all enjoyed this episode and I look forward to seeing you on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.